Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my review for Teen Mom 2, the season 8, episode 24. Um, yeah, tonight's lipstick is Kat Von D. The color is called Echo. Mm hmm. It's a little darkness, a little darkness, or whatever. And I like it, so it is what it is. Um, what else? t-shirts and stuff are still available the link is in the description box below you all saw a couple of previews it comes in different sizes and colors so yeah go ahead and hit that link um this episode of team mom 2 you know eh eh excuse me eh um i don't think it's getting boring but just some episodes are more interesting than others um, I feel like we wasted so much time with that whole reunion bullshit. Oh, also, if you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified when I have new videos up. And as always, please hit that like button. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. But yeah, not that I think it's boring. It's just that we had that whole reunion stuff where all the beef was going on. So I feel like... The episode, the season started off with all this stuff. Now I was like, okay, now that it's back to regular lives, it's like not doing much, but okay. So, you know, Chelsea is always easy breezy as always. You know, she's talking to about getting Aubrey's new birth certificate since her name has changed. Um, she also has to go to court with Adam about the child support reduction. Um, he wants to pay lower and lower and lower and less and less and less child support. And, you know, he's saying how he doesn't, um, well, no, from before that though, she even is talking to, I think with the producers and maybe even Cole saying how she just wonders if Adam's family will tell Aubrey different things, um, about stuff. So she wondered if she should just talk to Aubrey herself first and just say like, Hey, your dad's kind of sick. He makes, you know, these bad choices because soon she's going to have to see her dad at this, um, like, visiting center that is supervised or whatever. So she's like, she should maybe talk to her beforehand so that no one else has any kind of conversation with her. So from there, she goes to the little mediation stuff for the child support um, where Adam basically cries broke. Like, he's poor and broke. Like, he does not have a job. He doesn't have any car. He gets driven around by the people. His house is paid off, but he does not pay any other bills. How he, you know, can't work because the show shows him in such a negative light. And even though he he does not have a bank account because he doesn't have any money, um, and that he wants to start his own business. And she said it was just so crazy because the they kept asking him, like, well, if you're going to start a business, how can you do that with no money? And it's like he just kind of didn't have an answer. So I'm like, oh, that's weird. Um, so at that point in time, they, she, I think she said, like, nobody, they didn't make a decision then because it was mediation. Um, they'll kind of find out later. So that basically was all that is. But they're going to they, they're going to lower his child support. I don't know if he just had a really good lawyer who told him, like, look, if you want to pay less child support, this is what you have to do. Say you don't have a job, you know, because you're getting paid cash or getting paid under the table. They can't trace that. Close your bank accounts because if you have no money in them, you know, it is what it is. Um, and just say you have nothing because if, if, because if, child support for the most part in most places is built based on income. So if a guy has no income, it's a way that he can finagle it to where he has to pay like little to no 
um, child support. And I think that's what he's trying to do. Now, it does not always work. Like, sometimes they'll still say, well, no, these are your payments. You have to get a job because if not, you're going to just owe back child support. But he already owed 10 grand. So I'm thinking, like, if he already owed 10 grand and they have not arrested him for back child support, I mean, it's kind of a lose lose situation. What makes more sense is to just kind of watch. It. What makes more sense is. <sighs> Because he's taking her to court. I feel like she's not pressing the child support issue. He is. Because um, for the most part, her and Cole, like, take care of the kids. And it's not an issue. It's just Adam causing issues. So, excuse me. I hope they have him pay whatever. And then he just does not have to keep trying to take her to court. Because I feel like if he isn't trying to take her to court, she's not going to care what he's doing one way or the other. So, I'm like, that's, you know, it is what it is. Um, that was her whole thing. You know, Leah story was really easy as well. Um, the twins are turning eight and you know, she says Corey is having one party and she's having another. I did say, well, I wonder why they're not having, you know, parties together. Um, I also keep wondering, where's Miranda? Like if you notice Corey and Miranda does not shoot many scenes at all anymore. I wonder if they're kind of just over it because they have their own life. And they just not, don't want to be on the short as on the show as much as they used to. Because, you know, I don't follow most of them on social media. So, I don't be knowing stuff that go on because I don't have time to follow it. <laughs> I, I just watch the show. So, you know, we do see they have, you know, the party with Corey. And then, separate from there, you know, we kind of see Leah talking to one of her friends. It's about Gracie, who was in counseling. And she's saying how, you know, it's only been a couple of weeks. And I feel like all they talk about is, like, how her week went. Um, but there, like, aren't any, like, goals set in there, whatever. And I thought to myself, it's only been a couple of weeks for one. If she's turning eight now, she was only seven. So you want to try to make sure that the therapist and her are, like, getting to know each other. And she feels more comfortable talking to her you don't kind of do goal setting you know one or two appointments and you do kind of take time to get to know the kid and see what they like what they don't like and you just you know it's just it and cause I, I can say that because um I work around that kind of stuff or whatnot so I, I even though she said I know it's early so I know it you know it's going to take some time I'm like yeah just calm down they just, just calm down a little bit um we then see the twins have a party with Leah and of course the girls are having fun you know she's also mentioned to her friend how jeremy keeps commenting on her pictures and how he asked her to talk and so she's like i don't know what's kind of going on and i'm like her friend like he want to hit it basically um he want to hit it and get it back or whatever i hope not girl quit lying you like that boy um we then see that he does call her no she calls him um because he asked her to call and he apologized to her for basically um, saying on camera a couple of seasons ago how when well, when they first was in the divorce, he said on camera, like, I don't regret my daughter, but I do regret who I had her with. And he said how he felt like saying that was really hurtful. Tells her how she's a great mom, you know, how she takes care of all the girls, how she, you know, not only is doing good as far as being a mother, but also she's doing good at, you know, managing her own life. Meaning when they were going through the divorce, she was, you know, she used to have drug problems. Let's, let's call it spade a spade. She was addicted to some kind of pain medication or she was on some kind of pain medication that was making her look like a damn drug addict. And so that's around the time when they got divorced. And at that point in time, she wasn't in the best shape life-wise. Like her, you know, it, it was, it was, you know, she seems out of it. So it's, it, she, it is a completely different Leah this season than it was a couple of seasons ago so that's a great thing um he just says how you know he had been thinking about different things and how that was really bothering him that he said those mean things and he said you know he know that he said hurtful things in the past um he you know it had been bothering him so he just wanted to fully apologize for it because she's a great person i mean like now, now that was nice you know I, and sometimes you're because she said like you know every once in a while you do want to feel like you're appreciated and that's true because she's a mother of three and it's pretty hard you know she got the younger one the dad live away and then the two twins and then one twin you know what i'm saying has a has a, a disability it can be a lot um so it was cool to see him do that that was her whole thing so you know what like as i say it was really easy even Janelle was easy, okay? And let's see what, what was going on with Janelle. David beating them kids. Um, Janelle is going away for her birthday. They're going like up to like a mountain cabin or whatever. Her, David, and all the kids. Even Jace is going. 
So we see them go up to the cabin and we see how, you know, he has gifted her tickets to see Cardi B. And at first I'm looking like, I don't want you to listen to Cardi B. You don't deserve Cardi B, girl. Anyway, but you know, everybody love Cardi B. Cardi, um, the next thing we see with them is David and Janelle are mad and saying the kids are driving them crazy. And I said, that's why people say you don't deserve to have Jake because when you have all the kids together, y'all say how horrible it is. I mean, and that's the crazy part. And when you put, when you put kids in a damn cabin and they ain't got shit to do, all they're gonna do is get on your nerve. Like, that's what they do. They kids, you just ignore their ass as if they held down somewhere. Um, but they're, they're like the kids are pissing us off. They've been loud. They, they kept us up. They was up early in the morning. That's what kids do. Like, are y'all not parents? You're not. I forgot. Um. So at this point in time, you know, it was weird because it's like the way they were just talking about how the kids were getting on their nerves to me was a form of child abuse. It just was. You know, they're sitting down to eat. Kyra was like, you know, I have to poop. I have to poop. I want to poop. You don't have to poop. You don't have to poop. Sit down. You don't have to poop. I want to poop my pants. You better not poop your pants. Well, let them go to the bathroom. Kids sometimes will say, I got to poop. Or I got to pee. And they don't. You still take them to the bathroom because in case they are telling the damn truth. But my thing is, you never say, if a kid say, I have to poop, you never say, no, you don't sit there. And But, but if you but, sit there and don't poop, poop on yourself. But I'm telling you, I got to go to the bathroom. You want them to go. It was making me so mad. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure Nathan and his mom is at home somewhere calling up CPS. Like, look, I need the child protective services. They won't let my son go to the bathroom. Okay, he had to hold his poop. And if he poops on himself, they're going to beat him. Because that's what it seemed like. Okay, he said, if you, if you poop in your pants, you're going to be in trouble. He beating that boy. And you can't tell him no damn different. At this point in time, um, they show Kaiser hit a cameraman in the nuts i'm looking like what the fuck is going on here why would you do that you then see david yank kaiser up and take him into a different room and i feel like they kept moving the kids in different rooms to beat them to pop them to pinch them or something not on camera because then they're like you know what they acting crazy we going home you brought kids to a damn mountain to a damn lodge what did you think they were going to do sit down and play for cheesy no, they're going to drive you fucking insane. And you just let them go outside and play their little hearts out and you ignore it. But you can't make it seem as if because kids are being kids. And my thing is, Kaiser always been a little bad, okay? He's a little different, I'll say that. Um, but he always has been since he was a baby or whatever. Um, so now they want to go home. We're going home. The kids want to listen. Driving us crazy. We're going home. We're going home. We're going home. You then have Nathan's, not Nathan. You have Jace and David's daughter in the car by themselves with Janelle and David in the house trying to get the Kaiser and the little girl dressed. Oh my God, she lost her socks. Oh my God, he doesn't have shoes and socks on. Where's Kaiser's shoes and socks? Oh, his shoes is in the car. Why is his shoes in the car? He's not in the car. What the fuck is going on here? It was just kind of crazy. And when they get in the car, you hear David saying, why do they have cameras in the car? We don't need this recorded. We're just going home. We're not going anywhere. So Janelle is then cutting the cameras off in the front seat of where they are. She's, cut, they, she's trying to cut the cameras off, but the camera's in the back seat. And I think they thought the cameras in the front were off and forgot about the cameras in the back. And you hear David saying, you know, cause you guys don't know, don't know how to fucking act where you're going home. Cause that's what happens. It's consequences. Your ass is little And he's cussing and fussing, cussing and fussing. And I think that's why he did not want the camera on because he was gonna be cussing and fussing. And he then looks in the back seat and sees the other camera and cuts that one off too. Because he probably drove home the whole time threatening to beat them kids. And he didn't want that on camera. My thing is, y'all are shooting a TV show. So who says, why are the cameras in the car? We're not filming in the car. We're just driving home. You film anywhere else? They choose to not have those cameras on at some times because they be beating them kids. You can't tell me no damn different. You cannot. They at least are mentally abusive to them children. Um... <sighs> I, this is stupid. Right. <sighs> Anywho, 
um Kel Kel was easy as well you know she has her little podcast with her friend they're both moms you know it's kind of like stuff for moms by moms but it's weird because the other girl said you know she wants to discuss freezing eggs you know when you have to freeze your eggs so you can get pregnant later Kel then says I want to talk about bleaching my asshole because I want to be bleached so it can look it can look clean I say this bitch right here your priorities yo somebody brings up a serious parenting topic of freezing the eggs and you say i want to talk about bleaching my asshole <sighs> okay that's why they don't like her because she's just you know she's an asshole um anyway you know she then brings up how she's not dating men right now how she's kind of single and then she'll prefer to date women because women will understand her more and also because baby date number three chris was such put such a bad taste in her mouth <laughs> no pun intended um that she just kind of does not want to date, guy, date guys right now at all and she says how she dated guys before she was with dated women before she was with chris so it's not as if chris turned her on to women like she said i have dealt with women before girl you all just can't, can't be <laughs> I'm not gonna slush on that lady. Um, on the show, they do discuss, you know, having kids and um, how close together an age kid should be, and you know, how long should you wait. So, you know, Caitlin said how she did not want her kids to be too far off in age. You know, she says I was already kind of crazy that um, Isaac is almost eight and the new baby Lux is a newborn. So she said that she will want another kid, but she want to have one soon to make sure the kids are all you know not too far off in age and you know a lot of people do that you don't want your kids to be so far so far off in age they're not close as siblings um you know me and my siblings are all lucky to be a you know a year we're like two years apart because i'm two years younger than my sister and my brother is two years younger than her too but me and my brother are one year apart so you know it's, you know whatever um but yeah you do want that so that they can kind of be kids together so you know you see how close of a relationship that isaac and lincoln has and um lux will now kind of be in that same realm too so it does i mean it does make sense for her to have another kid before isaac like it would make sense for her to have another kid within the next two years and then she said she'll be done and either i don't think she needs four kids i think she's fine with three but i do think if she wants a fourth let her have her fourth and then be over and done with it but i'm like girl you can I just don't want her to have four kids by four men. I mean, that's like, ooh, you know, or would you get pregnant by one of your exes? Well, you can't get pregnant by Joe because V ain't gonna have it. You at this point, you can't get pregnant by Holly because he got somebody else pregnant. Um, you don't want to get pregnant by Chris again because he ain't he's some bullshit. So she would have to either like she rather like go to like a sperm bank, and that would it still be a bit well, baby day number four. Anyway. Um, she then says how she has to go to court with Chris, the baby number three, the baby that number three, um, because he is filed for trying to get some kind of custody of the son, got an emergency hearing saying how it's detrimental to his, the baby's well-being to not be around the father. So it's like a whole emergency hearing. And she's like, well, it's kind of crazy because, you know, me and him have like a volatile relationship. He has not reached out in two months to see the baby the baby's four months old at this point in time you know he did not sign he did not sign the birth to the he did not sign the birth, the birth certificate he did not want me to file for child support but now all of a sudden he wants to be so involved in a child's life and i mean hey you know she was also saying how she does not want to prevent him from being in the child's life but she knew they would end up needing some kind of supervised court order situation for it to work out because of how tense things are between him and her so my thing is it seems as if things are worse between her and chris than they are between her and javi but it's all it's just as bad as it was when before you know when her and joe was beefing years ago so you know people keep saying like we know what her and joe kind of went through the same thing like she didn't like v at first it was a whole big thing it's like a, a cycle with kale and it kind of is um it takes her a couple years to get to a good point with anybody so hopefully in the next three years her and Holly will be cool and in the next four years her and chris will be cool and she has a four baby her and whoever else will be cool too so it was what it was um she goes to court and, you know, she, he basically gets supervised visits 
for the next four weeks for five he will give five hour visits that are supervised but the supervision will be with his aunts which then pisses her off because she's like that's his aunt i feel like they're going to have somebody supervise him to see if it's okay for him to be with the kid without you know supervision it should be a third party who isn't biased like it should not be someone who is in his family and also should not be someone who i know it should be a third party person to be sure everything's everything and so she's like at this point i'm mad because it's just gonna he's gonna get you know it's gonna be finalized because his aunt isn't going to like side against him or whatever but i'm like if you don't want to keep him from his child and you want him to have a um relationship with him then just unless you don't want him around your kid because he's like a a, a danger that part i completely get be pissed off but if you're if he's not a danger to the kid and you just y'all can't get along that isn't a reason to be pissed off for him to get um unsupervised visits or whatever but you know we shall see what happens with that but that was the whole thing um brianna she finally got back to work okay and she is you know trying to figure out daycare stuff and i'm like you've been over here out here dating how i'm javi flying back and forth going on trips to wherever with this damn man javi but your ass ain't picking no damn daycare yet girl bye i'm not you should have been picking a daycare two three four five weeks ago okay but whatever you know she brings up how lewis is going to be in town who was stella's my um stella's dad and so they're going to go look at daycare and i'm like we hear about lewis in a minute he is always on the road doing truck drivers he's in she you know he's a truck driver so um they do go look at daycares and they found one that they liked so they put her in it and i'm like when they go out to eat is her lewis her mama her sister i'm like why is her mama her sister always around like whenever she's doing anything they are right there with her and i'm not saying that in the act that they they should not support her but eventually like they need to live their own lives like she should not be she should be able to do stuff without them consistently being with her at every step and every turn that's why they all live in that one that little small ass apartment so at dinner the mom I'm like yeah you know you don't really call and communicate as much with her or whatever you know can you do better he at first he looked aggravated like you know because i know he don't like when her mama questions her and i feel like that's the problem that she has she consistently let her mom her sister be all up in her mix a kid that's all up in her mix or whatever and when he answers the questions like you know i know i'm not really good at communication like i'm really bad at that i know that um but even brianna kind of takes up for him and says now it's hard for him to call and text and stuff because he'd be driving so he can't be you know distracted on the road so I, I get that too but he communicates when he can um but he said he'll get better with it and he said you know but i will definitely be there to help you financially um with her and he agrees to pay her 250 a week which is roughly a thousand bucks a month which is a good amount of money for child support technically um because she was like if you can just help with daycare that'd be great and i'm hoping that daycare a thousand bucks a month is helping her well i'm well i mean hell they might pay the whole rent who knows anyway her mom then says when he said he gonna pay her 250 a month you the man lewis oh now he the man oh now he, before he wasn't sh but for last season y'all dog that boy so bad okay and now he the man girl bye get on my now so at this point in time it's the next day she has to take you know nova to school and drop stella off at daycare her her mama and her sister go to take the baby to daycare i'm looking like why does it take three y'all to take that baby to daycare i'm like i know putting your child your newborn baby in daycare is difficult you know what i'm saying i remember when my sister had to put my nephew in daycare and it was just oh my god we were lucky enough to have a it was a family friend so we knew other kids who was in the daycare so dj was not you know we knew other people who was there but we didn't all like my sister had a you know she was sad leaving him you know whatever um but she did it and we all would go like take turns to pick him up but i'm like i just think it's weird that they do so much stuff together as if 
Brianna isn't able to do things on her own. And that's what it comes off as. Because everything they do, they do it together. Everything. I mean, they live together. They ride in the car together. They put their seatbelts on together. They brush their teeth together. They comb their hair together. It's just too much together. And it's just going to get a nerve. Um, so, of course, Brianna said, well, she, she can be sad. You know, was, you know, it's her baby. So, I can, I can get that. And y'all know it's hard for me to say that because I don't like Brianna. Okay. Um, we do see how we call her after work at the first day and i'm looking like how have you such a piece of shit for dating this girl for a little time we don't end up together now so it makes it even even more of him being a piece of shit um but at the house because she's on her way home so her mom and her sister's at home with the with the kids her mom is helping nova with her homework and nova brings up how which i think her mom asked like you do you feel do you miss your mom or whatever like your mom going back to work and nova said well no because mommy doesn't want to take care of me anyway so all she wants to do is take, to take care of Stella I was like oh it's crazy that that's how she feels and it was weird not what was more crazy is the little girl then said I know it's because she's a baby but I still feel like you know what I'm saying that's all she wants to do and um, her mom then says we know your mom does take care of you I take care of you Titi takes care of you and she then says well not Titi because she's lazy I said she, I mean, because, like, what does the sister do? Like, I don't know what she does. Or who, who knows what she do? Um, when Brianna gets home, Nova, like, ain't trying to be bothered. Like, she, like, I, I'm going to hug you. I'm going to kiss you. I'm done. And she's like, Nova, what's wrong? Give me a hug or whatever. Her mom then says, well, this is the conversation we had. This is how she felt or whatever. It kind of threw me for a loop. And Brianna's like, you know, I love you. You know, you know I love you, right? You know, you'll always be my first. I say, first of all, you should, not, you should not number your kids. Like, if you have to, like, I consistently tell my mom, Mom, I know I'm your favorite. I, I know I'm your favorite. She's like, well, yes, you are my favorite. You're my favorite, Jay Lee. So my mom lets us know I'm her favorite, Jay Lee. My sister's her favorite, Veronica. My brother's her favorite, Stacy or whatever. So she said we're all her favorite and gives our names. But she does not put one of us over the other. So I'm like, you know, for Brianna to say, you know, you'll always be my, my number one. I'm like, I don't feel like you should say that when you have two kids. Like, it's a better way to explain it without letting that one kid know, well, you, I, you're my number one and that's number two. Because if you're number one, that's number two. Okay, it is what it is. But I'm like, she, I just don't like her. But, you know, it was cool for her to try to reassure her daughter. I love you and I'm only taking care of Stella because she's a baby and she can't do for herself. But I love you. I love you. I love you. And I'm like, well, okay. Whatever. And that was all episode. So put your comments below. Let me know how y'all felt. I'm done. Can't do no more. Peace.